Well, as we develop programs, we often have a lot of data that we deal with, and we want to refer to that data in our program, and the way we do it is by naming the data. When we name our data, we create what is called a variable. So to name some data, we just come up with any name we want to. Now, there are a couple of rules on what the name can be, but I'll just uh, start off with the name A. And then we use the equal sign, and then we can put our data on the other side. So what that does is tell the computer to remember that A is 5. Now watch when I type A again. It returns the value A. So A is now a variable. By the way, it's called a variable because we can change what its, what its value is. So right now, A's value is 5. But if I say a equals 6, I now change the value of a. And when I, when I put a on a line again, I see 6. Now, when we create a variable, the best way to imagine it in our minds is that we have created a box that is named with the name. And what we put inside the box is the value. So I created a variable called a and I set it equal to 5. Then later on, I reassigned a or changed its value. So I uh, crossed out the 5 and replaced it with 6. Now let's create another variable named b. And let's set it equal to 8. So now we have two variables, a equal to 6 and b equal to 8. And we can just add them together. So in this case, when we evaluate it, we see the A and we go look inside the box and see the value inside and find six. We then see the B and see that the value inside is eight. So we add six and eight together and the result is 14. So the best place to use variables is where we have some sort of calculation that we do and we want to save the result. So just doing 5 plus 17 gives us 22. But if we want to use 22 in the future, it's often, oftentimes we'll save the result. So maybe the answer equals 5 plus 17. Then later on, we can do some more math. Let's say, um, call our answer 2. And we can say an the answer that we first got plus another 10. And now we have that answer saved. And we can see that answer by typing its name, and we have 32. Now, what can we use for a name? There is one rule that you have to follow when you create a name, and that is that it has to start with a letter. So A, B, C, all the way to Z. And then after it starts with a letter, you can use any combination of letters or numbers. So for example, I can use Fred, or George, or something else. Now the name you choose should mean something to you. It should explain what the data is that you're storing. That way, you, when you look at your program, you can easily identify what everything is. Now since we want to choose good names, and we want to be able to type them in correctly, it's often that we'll choose names that have multiple words. For example, my data is here. So this is a multiple word uh, name right here. And if you notice, I capitalized the first letter of each word, except for the very first word. This is the standard format that you should choose use for uh, creating names in Python. Now, it's OK if you don't do this. Python will still work just fine, but it will help reduce errors. If you stick with the standard format, and then you go to type this name someplace else, for example, let's go ahead and give this a name. If I want to type this uh, somewhere else to use my variable, then I have to type it correctly. Now, look what happens if I accidentally do not type it correctly. Notice I used a lowercase h here instead of the capital case h. When I type it, I'm going to get this error right here. That's because it hasn't seen this name before. You'll probably get this error quite a lot. But don't worry, 
just go back to where you defined your name and make sure that everything is exactly the same and go ahead and fix your misspelling or your miscapitalization like I did and then things will work again. By the way, this format for variable names is called camel case. As you can see, the different humps along the way remind people of, a, of the humps on a camel. So they call this camel case. And I, so I recommend using camel case in your names. Always start with lowercase letters and then capitalize the first word after that. That way you'll use the standard format and whenever you see a name that doesn't follow the standard format, you know that that isn't the right way to type the name in. And then hopefully that will help reduce errors by accidentally miscapitalizing things uh, when you type them in again. We're going to be doing stuff with pictures a lot in this class. So I'm going to show you how we can open and display pictures in JES. And then I'll show you how using variables can help this process. Now, before you continue, make sure that you have pictures that you can use for this class. There will be a link in Canvas that you can use to download the pictures, or you can use your own pictures. But I highly recommend using a photo editor to uh, reduce the size of the pictures so they're about 600 pixels wide, or else you're, they'll use a lot of memory and it will take a long time for your programs to run. If And sometimes you might use too much memory and your programs won't run at all. But the pictures that you download for Canvas are all uh, edited already to be about the right size that you need to use. So the first step is to be able to find a picture on your computer. Now the computer uses something called a path, and that tells it where to find the picture on your hard drive. Because you have a lot of data on your computer, you have the operating system, all of your pictures, all of your programs, all of your Word documents, and we need to be able to find the picture that you want to work with. So uh, to be able to find that picture, we can say pick a file. Now notice the camel case that we use here. So make sure you capitalize A and F. If you don't, this won't work. Now when you, once you do that, it will pop up a window that uh, you can uh, use to choose your picture. Now I saved all the pictures on my desktop. And um, right here in this media sources, so I just downloaded that file and extracted it here. And let's go ahead and uh, choose Arch right here. And so we'll go ahead and click Open. Now right here is the path of that picture on my computer. Now if you're using a Windows machine, you'll probably see a C colon at the beginning of that. But now we need to use this, and if you notice, it's just a string. And the string is just uh, indicating the location of that picture on my hard drive. We can use that location to uh, load the picture off my hard drive. So I could say make picture and make pictures job is to read the picture off of the hard drive so we can display it. It actually puts it in memory. So then we can say pick a file. Now, if you notice there are uh, an opening parenthesis, a closed parenthesis, and another closed parenthesis. Don't forget that one right here. By the way, what, this is called a function, and in order to call a function, we need an uh, opening and closing parenthesis. So we do that, and we can pick our arch picture again, right here. And now you notice, hey, we have the picture, but it's still not displaying it. So this right here will actually show our picture right on our screen. Now the first thing that will happen, and I know this is last, but we'll talk more about these functions later on. The first thing that will happen is we'll get something to pick our file. And that'll give us a string back that, that locates the file on our hard drive. We'll give that string to make picture so that it can read our picture off of the hard drive and put it into memory. And then after, the picture is in memory, Explore will pop open a window with our picture inside of it. So I have um, this and I can pick my arch. And you can see I'm now viewing my picture. Now that's a lot to type in and it's also mistake prone. 
For example, if I forget one of the parentheses on the end, which might have happened to you as you're typing it in, you notice I get these dots and then it, it kind of is hard to uh, get out of. Um, but if you add that extra parenthesis and press enter a few times, then you'll finally get that window to pop up. Let's go ahead and look at a different picture, maybe bird two. But that's how we open and display a picture. But how can we use variables to make this process a little bit easier? First, I can create a variable called file name. Now this can be any name you want, but I decide to use file name. And I know I didn't capitalize name, this is two words, but in uh, computer science, we kind of consider that one word. But if you want to capitalize the N, you can do that. So I'll go ahead and say pick a file. And let's go ahead and pick our arch. Now um, I can type file name again, and you can see there's the path of my file. Now I can say um, arch or any name that you want. You can pick uh, any name you want here. I could go ahead and say make picture. And I'll pass the file name. Instead of putting pick a file inside, I could just pass that string that I saved away. I used a variable to save this string away. And so now I can make a picture. And then I can go explore my arch. And there's my arch. And so typing it in in these three steps, you don't have to do this. This is just me showing you. You can do step one, step two, step three. Now I highly recommend practicing that. Now in that previous example, you could see that I created two new variables, one called file name and one called arch. Now in file name, I stored the path of where the picture is located on my computer. And so you can imagine that string goes inside the box for file name. Now next I ran make a picture and I stored the result in the box for arch. So when make picture runs, it reads my picture off of the hard drive and stores it in the memory so we can use it in JES. And when I created the name arch, I'm able to have this arrow here that points to my picture so I can save that picture and use it in the future. Finally, I run explore arch and when we look up arch, we see this picture and we're able to display the picture.